Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with guys from a Tokyo criminal gang, chasing down and crushing a Yakuza member. After knocking him to the ground, the criminals declare to the dying Yakuza member that they will now rule Tokyo. Moving to a 26-year-old man named Hanagaki, who lives in his small apartment, where chaos reigns supreme. The guy is so unremarkable that his neighbor has to wake him up every morning for breakfast. Hanagaki sees on the news two random bystanders were killed yesterday, in a showdown between the Yakuza and the Manji gang. The man is horrified to learn these were his old acquaintances, a girl named Hinata and her brother, Naoto. Hinata was the only girl Hanagaki was together with, and this news devastates him. He keeps watching the horrible news over and over, even at work on his phone. The director notices and scolds him for being constantly distracted. He apologizes in response. In the evening, the fellow is riding home on the subway. Suddenly, someone pushes him onto the tracks, just before the train arrives. Being sure that he will die, Hanagaki screams in terror. However, he is suddenly transported back 10 years. Seeing his high school friends, he thinks it is a flashback before his death. What surprises him most is his strange image and silly hairstyle, which he was very proud of during his high school years. His friends inform him they are going to get into a fight with senior students from another school today. Hanagaki tries to stop them, but the boys pay no attention to him. When the friends arrive at the fight, they are surprised and frightened to see boys a few years older have come out against them. The leader of the rival group is also the leader of the Manji crime group. At this point, Hanagaki remembers how they were brutally beaten by these scoundrels 10 years ago. He urges one of the friends to step aside, but the boys do not make it in time, and are beaten again. After humiliating them, the boys challenge Hanagaki and his friends to beg for mercy, and apologize on their knees. After it all ends, Hanagaki walks to his friend's house, trying to remember what she looked like 10 years ago. He meets Hinata, and she greets him with a smile, and treats his wounds. Suddenly, he announces he will die in 10 years. However, the girl is sure that this will not happen, because he is very brave, thus prompting him to believe in himself. When the girl leaves, he notices thugs are mistreating Hinata's brother. He decides it is time to change his life, and lashes out at the bullies, but through his own stupidity, he gets a blow on the back of his head from the swing. When he comes to his senses, Naoto, thanks him for saving him from the bullies. Hanagaki explains to him that he and his sister will be killed in 10 years, during a showdown between the city's mafia clans. Thus, Hanagaki asks Naoto to become stronger, and protect his sister. The younger comrade nods, and they shake hands. Suddenly, Hanagaki goes back to the future again. He finds himself in the hospital, and is surprised to see Naoto explain that he survived, because he believed his words 10 years ago, and he now works as a detective in the police force. Naoto barely managed to pull Hanagaki off the tracks, saving his life. Unfortunately, Naoto reveals his sister Hinata is dead, as he did not believe she would die 10 years later. He takes his friend to his apartment, and tells him about the two main members of Manji's gang. These are the leaders of the gang, Manjiro Sano and Tedeki Saki. These two have created the most dangerous gang in Tokyo. Naoto asks his friend to go back in time, and prevent the two gangsters from meeting, but Hanagaki refuses, until he realizes by changing the past, he can save Hinata. Hanagaki shakes hands with the detective, and through this, he is transported back 10 years. He finds himself in a fight club, run by Kiyomizu. Here, Hanagaki and his friends are constantly beaten. He knows this humiliation will last for many more months, which causes the guy to lash out. He demands that if he wins, Kiyomizu takes him to the leader, Manjiro. Kiyomizu is angered by his insolence, and starts beating him brutally. Then the villain takes a bat, and is about to kill. Suddenly, Manjiro appears with his deputy, Draken, and punishes Kiyomizu for organizing a fight club without his knowledge. Manjiro, noting the courage with which Hanagaki confronted the big man, approaches the guy, and says that they are now friends. He then beats Kiyomizu and leaves with Draken. Hanagaki and his friends are glad, from now on, Kiyomizu and his ruffians won't bother them anymore. Hanagaki takes Hinata to the town festival, and promises to protect her forever. When he wants to gently take the girl's hand, Naoto appears instead of her, and accidentally grabs his hand. In doing so, he returns to the future. Naoto, having studied Hanagaki's time travel, concludes he is traveling to the same date and time as the present, exactly 10 years ago. When Hanagaki says he met Manjiro, the gang leader, Naoto insists he return to the past and kill the gangster, ending the gang forever. When Hanagaki goes back in time, he finds himself at the school. Manjiro and Draken invite their new friend to join them at a party. 
Soon, while Hanagaki is talking to the two, Hinata arrives, and noticing that he is talking to thugs, she slaps one of them. However, realizing that the ringleader came here with good intentions, she immediately apologizes. Next, as Hanagaki takes a walk with Manjiro and Draken, he asks why they called him friend. The ringleader replies Hanagaki reminds him of his dead older brother, who was not afraid to face stronger opponents. In the evening, Hanagaki shows up at the gang's general gathering, where he is called by the leader. Suddenly, Kiyomizu also appears, wanting to bully the leader again, but Manjiro and Draken arrive in time. At this point, the gang leader expels the arrogant big guy from the gang. Later, Manjiro reveals that members of a rival Mobius gang have brutally beaten one of their members. The leader urges the fighters to avenge their comrade and gives a motivational speech. The gang members will attack the rivals on July 13th, a public holiday in their town. Next, Hanagaki again goes into the future, and tries to convince Naoto that Manjiro is actually a good and proper person. However, the detective does not want to hear any of this. He is certain that killing the ringleader is the only way to save his sister. The two look at photos of Manji gang leaders, and Hanagaki is surprised to notice his schoolmate Akuna among them. He decides to meet the old friend he has not seen in years, and goes to the club, which is now owned by Akuna. Suddenly, Akuna calls Hanagaki to the roof of the building, and confesses that he was the one who pushed him onto the train tracks, and adds that he did it out of fear of Kisaki, and that he now feels incredibly lonely. When asked how Manjiro's gang became so cruel and ruthless, Akuna suddenly replies that, after Draken's death, Manjiro turned into a full-blown madman, and dragged the others with him. Akuna realizes his friend has the ability to move into the past. He asks him to save them all, and he suddenly jumps off the roof. Later, Hanagaki finds out from Naoto that Draken died from a stab wound, during a confrontation with Mobius gang. At this point, Hanagaki travels back in time, hoping to save Draken from death. Hanagaki is very happy to see Akuna alive again. Later, he meets Hinata, and when she declares that she wants to go to the festival tomorrow, he realizes that Draken's murder will take place there. Concurrently, Hanagaki rushes to the ringleader, Manjiro, and asks him to stop the fight with Mobius's gang, as there will be serious casualties. Suddenly, Mobius ruffians appear. As a member of the rival gang, he challenges Pa, a member of Manjiro's gang, whose sister has been violently beaten. However, Pa is easily overpowered and nearly killed by the opponent. Fortunately, Manjiro approaches the cocky rival, and sends him to the ground with a punch. Hanagaki, noticing that the Mobius member has grabbed a broken bottle, warns the boss, and Draken rushes to Manjiro's aid, and reduces the enemy to pulp. Hanagaki is overjoyed to have succeeded in changing the fate of things. Later in the evening, he goes with Hinata to the festival, but noticing the presence of some of Mobius' thugs, he realizes everything can end very badly. However, he is unable to escape, and the ruffians grab him and beat him violently. Subsequently, they also attack Draken, who has been lured here by deception. Manjiro, noticing that Draken has not returned to the shelter, realizes something is wrong, and rushes to the festival. Amidst the swirling chaos and relentless action, the indomitable Draken stands tall, confronting the Mobius bandits with every last ounce of strength coursing through his veins. In the heart of this fierce battle, a glimmer of hope emerges, as Hinata, fueled by determination, stumbles upon Hanagaki, held captive in the ominous park. Unyielding in her resolve, she swiftly unties him, and together, they charge towards the aid of their comrades. Meanwhile, on a collision course with destiny, Manjiro and his resolute gang race towards the electrifying festival, where the air crackles with tension and anticipation. There, amidst the flickering lights, an explosive and bloody confrontation erupts, pitting the gang against their cunning foes in a flurry of unyielding combat. In the shadows of the chaos, Kiyomizu, a sinister figure, seizes the opportunity to enact his dark intentions. His sinister design is set in motion, as he captures Draken, an enigmatic force to be reckoned with, and drives a malevolent blade into his side, aiming to strike a deadly blow to the liver. The stakes rise, the pulse quickens, and the fight for survival becomes more treacherous than ever. But in the heart of the maelstrom, amidst the clashing of blades and the deafening roars, a hero emerges. Hanagaki, his spirit aflame with courage, defies the odds and hurdles towards Draken's side. The race against time intensifies, as Hanagaki's determination becomes the beacon of hope in this cataclysmic confrontation. Kiyomizu has run away, and Hanagaki notes with relief that Draken is still breathing. He grabs the wounded fellow, and drags him to safety. Suddenly the guy's path is blocked by Kiyomizu, ready to attack, but this time Hanagaki has no intention of giving in. He fights like a hunted animal, 
bites the enemy painfully, and finally grabs him firmly by the neck. Hanagaki strangles the enemy until he falls dead. Soon the police and ambulance arrive, and take Draken to the hospital. Throughout the night, Manjiro's gang members wait outside the hospital. In the morning, they are relieved to hear from the doctor that Draken has been saved. Once his mission ends, Hanagaki returns to the present, and rushes to Naoto to find out if Hinata is alive in this timeline. On the way, Hanagaki notes with pleasure that his friend Akuna is alive and well. Hanagaki knocks on Naoto's door, and when the door opens, he sees Hinata's face, and realizes he has succeeded in saving his beloved. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.